took Darlington to the East Midlands and Rushton and Diamonds obliged with a bit of a gift. Ian McCafferty was deemed to have handled inside the box and penalty king Clyde Vineyard was more than grateful for the chance to turn Darlington's domination into a second half lead. But what disappointed manager Hodgson, who was celebrating his birthday, was an equaliser within two minutes. David Bell barged his way through the defence single-handed and made it 1-1. Just one point for the boss's birthday. Well, uh, Red was part of a very impressive crowd at Nisham Road last night and there were two reasons to cheer. Because a 2-0 win took Darlington to second place in League Two. More than 4,000 fans turned out to see Darlington's first home game of the season and the Quakers got off to a winning start against Stockport. New boy Carlos Logan scored his first goal for the club. Judging from the celebration, he enjoyed it. I thought Clyde was going to get it first, but then I could see it was going too far for him. So I just cracked him on the back post and just got a good, good contact with it and finished it well. Fellow new signing Simon Johnson showed glimpses of the skill his manager says will excite the public this season. And it almost led to Logan scoring a carbon copy second. David Hodgson's young guns didn't have it all their own way. Sam Russell had to make an excellent save three minutes from time. That was vital. Within two minutes, Agpo Soji found space in the area to seal the win. There's a new motivation at the Darlington Stadium. At the end of every game, we're setting our players in all four bars which are in the stadium. And we've told them, you set foot into those bars after the game to see the fans and you haven't given 100% then expect to have a little bit of a thing said at you. Go into those bars and have them give 100%, regardless of the result, and you'll be quite surprised by the reaction. So we put them on the total. A better day for Darlington in a tale of two penalties at Grimsby. Clyde Vineyard was centre stage in the first, fouled by Tony Crane after 64 minutes. The Dutch striker was keen to take it himself, but a very impressive save by Steve Mildenhall was not part of his plans. Some clever stuff from teenager Anthony Peacock on his debut gave the Quakers a chance of take two. Tom knew his foul earned him a second yellow card. Ghislaine and Dumbu and Sungu had replaced Vineyard by then and took over the penalty kicking role to great effect. Enough for a second win of the season for Darlington. Having three teams in the Premiership, our first North East derby of the new season took place at Hartlepool. They took on the old enemy, Darlington, in the Carling Cup. And both teams did the region proud. More than 6,000 fans created a great atmosphere, but it was Hartlepool who edged the first half. John Daly held off Joey Hutchinson to rifle past Darlington keeper Bert Bossu. Adam Boyd's season hasn't really started yet, and last season's top scorer had only one real sniff of goal. Unlucky. Martin Scott made the change, Michael Proctor replaced the Hartlepool hero, and it worked, even with a slice of luck. The former Sunderland striker chased a seemingly lost cause, but Hutchinson and Bossu messed up big style. Surely it was match over. But Darlington's Carlos Logan had other ideas. Starting inside his own half, he took route one. Pool defenders seemed reluctant to challenge, and the former Manchester City man fired low past Dimi Constantopoulos. Ten minutes to go. Could the Quakers level? Perhaps if the referee had seen Darren Williams tackle on Logan as illegal, Darlington would have had a penalty. But Hartlepool put themselves into round two in the dying minutes. Proctor again doing all the work and picking up the rebound. What a night! It was a great atmosphere. Both sets of fans enjoyed it. It was an entertaining game. End-to-end uh, -end stuff, chances for both teams. Uh, we took ours, so full credit to our, our strikers. Tonight, was a, it, there was no points at stake. Pride was at stake. And the one thing I pointed out to our players is make sure that when you come off that field, that the 700 Dalton fans who've paid £18 to come into the stadium go out proud that you've given everything. And I'll be honest with you, I think they did that. Four. Hartlepool got off to a bad start at Huddersfield and never recovered. Darlington had a bad finish and missed out on all three points at Chester. The Quakers must be kicking themselves after throwing away a couple of points at the Diva Stadium. Simon Johnson opened the scoring with a penalty. Then Akpo Sodje got started. His first of the day was a looping header, Darlington two ahead. So far so good, but former Hartley Bull striker Marcus Richardson got Chester back in it. The Quakers went back up the other end and restored their two-goal lead. Sodje again, great finish. Chester pegged them back when Greg Blundell sneaked in unmarked at the far post. He keeping up, that's 3-2 Darlington. 
4-2 when Soji headed home his hat-trick goal. The Quakers looked home and dry. Into the 89th minute and some sloppy defending let in Blundell. Surely just a consolation though. Oh no it wasn't. Into stoppage time and Blundell turned provider for Richardson to make the final score for all. Some game. Hartley Pool were... After conceding two goals in the last two minutes on Saturday, Darlington were determined to do better at home to Rochdale yesterday. Luck was on their side for Simon Johnson's opener. But the referee did his best to give the Quakers the bank holiday blues. A penalty for this challenge by Matt Clark seemed generous. The red card which followed, ludicrous. Grant Holt smashed his spot kick past Bert Bossu. But Carlos Logan is building a reputation for himself at Darlington. More trickery and a very good finish made sure of all three points. The Quakers go second, and the celebration wasn't bad either. David Hodgson was much happier with his Friday night out against Notts County, even though Akpo Soji had several chances to give the Quakers the lead their football deserved. The breakthrough came in the last ten minutes, good set-up from Neil Wainwright out wide, and substitute Gila Ndumbu Nsungu seized the chance. But County's direct approach paid off five minutes from time, with Andy White grabbing the equaliser and making sure County stay on top of League Two. Wellington got off to a slow start at Mansfield and found themselves behind when Simon Brown finished off Richie Barker's shot. But they were level by the break. A really odd goal, this one, but credit Matt Clark for some quick thinking. It looked like they'd thrown a point away when goalkeeper Bertrand Bossu made a horrible mess of a clearance and presented Brown with his second goal. But Guy Ndumbu Nsungu is becoming quite the super sub. He came off the bench to score for the third game running. It finished 2-2 at Field Mill. Darlington managed only their second win in ten games the hard way, going a goal behind to Adam Connolly. Evidently, manager David Hodgson played it cool at half-time, but his substitute Neil Wainwright did the trick for him. Suddenly, the Quakers were transformed. Four minutes later, the excellent Anthony Peacock played in John Joe Dickman, who swept in the lead. Then in stoppage time, Guy and Dungu and Sungu iced Darlington's cake in style. The boss can't make it all out. I haven't got a clue if it gives them a boost. We come out of Notts County having a great performance, then we went on the blip. We came out of Macclesfield with a great performance, and we go and have another blip. Now we come out of this 3-1, I haven't got a clue what's going to happen at Wrexham. Now Wickham will fare without Nathan Tyson, only time will tell. But Richard Keogh putting past his own keeper just topped off a depressing couple of days. More than ever, the onus now falls on Tommy Mooney to spearhead the promotion challenge. He preserved England's only unbeaten record. Matt Bloomfield might have won it. Clark County's foul was punished with a red card, but not the penalty that Wickham had hoped for. Alan Armstrong, who only left Darlington last month, set up David Bell for his first goal since the opening day, when these two teams drew one all. On that occasion, Bell had equalised after Darlington went in front from the penalty spot. This time, Darlington were to get a stoppage time penalty, scored by Gian and Dumbu and Sungu. Darlington are enduring a major slump in form further down. The Quakers were among the bookies' pre-season favourites for promotion out of League Two, but if results don't improve soon, they're in danger of having to battle it out in the drop zone. Graham Souness, Mick McCarthy, Martin Scott. Add to that list Darlington boss David Hodgson. Phil Stamp netted his first goal for the Quakers. That one was for the boss. Hodgy is starting to feel the heat after seeing his would-be promotion chasers slip from second to 16th. Stamp's goal took the Quakers in level at the break. Calamitous defending from Carlos Logan and Bertrand Bossu had combined to give Mark Salard an eighth minute opener. In fact, all three Shrewsbury goals owed more to fortune than skill. When you've not won a game in seven weeks, look, deserts you. Bossu given no chance with this deflection. Neil Sorville, the grateful beneficiary. There was no doubt the Shrews had the better of the game. And yet again, the rub of the green. Neil Ashton wrapped up a 3-1 win with, unbelievably, their third deflected goal of the match. His 35-yard effort again leaving Bossu helpless. Darlington a hapless on the road. That was their fifth defeat. So Saturday's trip to second bottom Stockport is a must-win game if the Quakers are to avoid slugging it out at the wrong end of the table. Stockport are just one place off the bottom after slipping to their third league defeat in a row. Carlos Logan scored Darlington's first after 37 minutes. Darlington have struggled away from home. This was their first victory in 12 away games, and two late goals made it look comfortable. Ghislaine Ndumbu Nsungu scored his seventh of the season. 
And then just a couple of minutes later, Akpo Sojay completed a crucial away win. They may be bottom... Carlisle hadn't beaten Darlington in 13 attempts. Fortune briefly favoured them this time around when Shelton Martis was deemed to have held back Danny Livesey. Chris Lumsden put Carlisle in front. But Paul Simpson's side are in promotion contention thanks largely to their away form. At Brunton Park, two more points went missing when Darlington Simon Johnson ambled into space. Also looked like a winter wonderland at Darlington, but at least the Quakers could serve up some festive cheer for their fans. Less than 3,000 hardy Quakers' souls braved the cold last night, but those who did saw Shelton Martius hit a glorious free kick just before the break. He was unlucky to see it at the post, but Darlington were lucky that Guy and Dumbu and Sungu put away the rebound. The clinching goal was scored by Simon Johnson, but he had the easy part. This was all about the pace of Neil Wainwright, the Quakers' winger ripping Barnett apart and laying a goal on a plate for the grateful Johnson. The groundsman and youth team had spent the day clearing snow off the pitch and it was all worth it, despite a late goal from Ben Strevens that set the alarm bells ringing. It was panic stations for the last 30 seconds and Strevens had a chance to claim an undeserved point for Barnett, but thankfully for the Quakers, he missed and justice was done. This transformed Darlington season, David Hodgson's men can dream of the playoffs instead of casting worrying looks over their shoulders. The Quakers twice took the lead at home to Torquay yesterday, only to be pegged back. John Joe Dickman's shot came back off the upright for Trezor Candle to score inside 15 minutes. Torquay equalised through Martin Phillips' hopeful hit in first half stoppage time. Darlington then had a stone wall penalty denied when Alex Lawless handled Neil Wainwright's cross, but they kept plugging away and Guy Undumbu and Sungu restored their advantage. There was a story suggesting the striker wanted to leave the Quakers, but it turns out he's quite happy. There was just something lost in translation between his French and Hodgson's County Durham twang. Again, Torquay came back with a last-minute leveller from substitute Alan Connell. But the Quakers showed their resilience on New Year's Eve by coming back from two down to get a point at Lincoln. And yesterday, they kept going till the final whistle, allowing Clark Kelty to win an injury-time penalty. And Dumbu and Sungu sent Andy Marriott the wrong way from the spot. A great start to 2006 for the Quakers. Torquay didn't take it so well. Sacco, who'd given the penalty away, was sent off after receiving two yellow cards in the space of a minute. And manager Leroy Rossini was also ordered from the dugout. But that just made it more enjoyable for the Darlington fans. We were on course for all three points at Notts County when Kyle Lafferty announced his arrival on loan from Burnley with an excellent goal. But Quakers boss David Hodgson had chosen to go into the game without a substitute goalkeeper. So when David Knight was injured, Phil Stamp, a fairly burly midfielder by trade, had to go in. He was beaten by Steve Scoffham for the equaliser, and then again eight minutes from the end when Stampy forgot he was allowed to use his hands and watched Dan Martin's shot dribble in. The less said about his efforts to save Julian Baudet's penalty, the better. It was a shame, because when Carlos Logan's free kick brought the score back to 3-2, you couldn't help but think that the Quakers would have won, but for their goalkeeping headaches. Darlington's debutant keeper, Kasper Schmeichel, the big man's son, saw James Quinn put Peterborough into a half-time lead. He ended up on the winning side, though. Paul Hopkins levelled the score in only his second game for Darlington. And in two minutes from time, Kyle Lafferty grabbed a late, late winner. Peterborough's impressive tilt to the playoff place has temporarily been halted. Darlington are now unbeaten at home since September. Darlington were the only football league club in the region to win at the weekend. It seems the Quakers fans could have a new hero. David Hodgson has pulled off a few big signings in his time, but Schmeichel in goal for Darlington? It was, of course, Casper, the son of the Great Dane, it's not difficult to see the resemblance, both physically and at times, in their style of goalkeeping. There was little the 19-year-old stopper could do to prevent James Quinn putting Peterborough in front, but it was largely down to him that that was all Posh had to show for a one-sided half. It was different after the break, and Darlington fully deserved Paul Hopkins' scruffy equaliser. Stick or twist? The Quakers gambled and pushed on looking for the winner, and fellow new boy Kyle Lafferty scored for the second consecutive game, Three minutes from time to seal all three points. So a 2-1 win for Darlington puts the playoffs back within reach. There's no doubting who the hero was, though. A man of the match display from Schmeichel. And it seems Casper is the friendly goalkeeper. There's no 
pressure of a, of, of a name or anything like that. Obviously people will compare me, maybe, but who, who wouldn't like want to be compared with him? Darlington have been in good shape since mid-December and made the most of Oxford's home jinx. John Joe Dickman fired Darlow in front two minutes into the second half. United heading for their sixth defeat in seven at the Kassam Stadium. David Hodgson's side were home and dry thanks to Simon Johnson's solo run, which sealed the win. Eventually. For David Hodgson, the Darlington boss is flavour of the month because his side are flying in League Two. Kyle Lafferty got them started against Mansfield. At post, Soji got the second, making a fool out of Mansfield goalkeeper Jason White in the process. Just a hint of a gap at the near post there. Skipper Matt Clark picked up the pieces in the six-yard box to make it 3-0 six minutes later. And six minutes after that, Shelton Martis got his first goal of the season. It moved Darlington up to sixth place in League Two. Bristol Rovers coach Paul Trollope says that this is the start of a big week for his team. We followed the visit to Darlington with home games against Cheltenham and Stockport. Junior Agogo gave Bristol Rovers the lead midway through the second half. They were 19th when Trollope took charge. Now they have high hopes of making the playoffs, just like Darlington, who hit back to equalise when Chris Carruthers handled and gave away a penalty. Simon Johnson had only been on for 10 minutes as a substitute, but he beat Scott Shearer to make it one all. Darlington have now gone six games without defeat. And Chester shared eight goals when they met in August. They served up just one this time around, but not before Darlington's Clark Kelty was sent off for raising his arm. It didn't hold them back, though. Shelton Martis with a 75th-minute winner to leave Mark Wright still searching for his first win since returning to the Diva. David Hodgson warned his Darlington players only a wing could keep their playoff prospects alive. And Guy Bates' amazingly bendy neck had them off to a great start. But Lincoln had promotion aspirations of their own and were quickly levelled through Marvin Robinson. The third goal in nine minutes switched the momentum again. And up and under from Darlow caught the Lincoln defence and keeper in two minds. Matt Clark nipped in to punish the dithering. The game was eventually settled by Jamal Johnson, on loan from Blackburn, and his Premiership class shone through. That fabulous finish was followed by a scintillating sprint that left the Lincoln defender looking slower than a Wembley builder. At 4-1, Darlington had given Hodgson what he demanded, a second win in ten games. And Lincoln's scruffy second from Jamie Forrester couldn't disguise the fact that they've hit a sticky patch. Well, away from the England manager's job and the Premiership and the UEFA Cup, down in League Two, Darlington have moved within a point of the playoffs after a 2-0 win over Rochdale at Spotlands last night. On loan striker Andy Cook got the first goal of the match. He started and finished a fine move on an awful pitch, timing his run perfectly to meet Matty Appleby's pullback on the edge of the box. Well, the Quakers doubled their lead. There's another goal to come just after half time. I can tell you about it. It was a run down the right. <laughs> Caused loads of trouble for the relegation threatened Rochdale. Jamil Johnson scored that one, ghosted through. Barely saw him. The defenders didn't either. 2 0 for Darlington last night. They're going well and hoping for a place in the playoffs at the end of the season. They need a win over bottom of the table Torquay on Saturday. Right. A body blow for the bottom club Torquay. They were ahead at half time against Darlington thanks to Kevin Hill's powerful header. But by the end of the game they've been beaten again and now they need a major change in fortunes if they're to avoid the drop into the conference. Akpo Soje came up with the equaliser for Darlington. And then, with time almost up, Neil Wainwright scored a cracking winner from the edge of the penalty area. Darlington are now just one point and one place outside the playoff zone. Talk. Only football can provide. Darlington are still in with a chance of replacing Hartlepool in League One. The Quakers recovered from losing to bogey team Northampton on Saturday by picking up a point at Cheltenham. Neil Wainwright's header was cancelled out by Grant McCann's penalty. 
Matty Appleby and Michael Townsend both saw red for an off-the-ball incident and Darlington could have nicked it in the end. Sub Simon Johnson almost embarrassing Shane Higgs in the town goal. Darlow a ninth, two points behind Lincoln with three games left. This one's going right to the wire. Answer.